Good morning, everyone. Guy with a lot of hair here. Uh, today we're gonna be back working on the Infinity. I forgot where we left off last time, but I remember taking off a lot of the pieces in the front, stuff like the windshield wipers and that. Um, you're seeing these videos a week after they happen because that's just how my editing is going, so it's a bit weird for me, but anyway. Um, today I'm gonna try and take off the trunk, which is proving to be a difficult task, and, uh... Yeah, goodness. I should probably update you on how things are going. Um, there's no door <laughs> on this side, and there's no door on that side. It's hanging out over there. Um, but I've actually managed to sell the passenger door and uh, a few other small things. So the budget is now, uh, I think I've got back $1,170 on this car so far, which is really good. Um, it makes me very happy. So my father-in-law came by to uh, help my wife and I move something and he wanted to check out the car in the garage and he actually came up with a couple ideas on how to use some of the spare parts in here which I didn't think about before. Um, one of them was like if I can't sell this seat for some reason, say the driver's seat or the passenger seat, then I could totally use it as a sim racing seat. <laughs> I could make myself like a little sim racing cockpit using some infinity parts. Uh, because why not? Like, I have a wheel, I have pedals, I could, I could depower this seat and make it into something interesting. But, I mean, just an idea. Obviously, I'm going to try and sell it first, and if that doesn't happen, then other projects can happen. Another thing which I'll show you soon is stuff like the struts from the uh, rear hatch. If I don't sell those with the hatch, then I can use them for uh, other things, like using them as um, pieces to hold up my toolbox, for example, to make it a little bit nicer. Just stuff like that. Um, so I thought it was cool the way that he was thinking and I'm kind of gonna try to adapt that thinking for myself as well um, With this and also my future go-kart project, which I'll show you in a second. So thanks to my grandfather for this uh, He's given me a Honda GC 160 uh, Which is unfortunately stuck to a pump at the moment that pump needs to come off, but the uh, the bolts that are holding it in are partially rounded, so that's going to be interesting. Um, but this engine here and this cart and probably the wheels are going to be used to donate to my uh, go-kart build, um, which I'll show you a little bit more about in a bit, but we're not going to be able to do that. I've sworn to my wife that we're not going to start this project until that is out of the garage. Uh, and once this thing is out of the garage, then I'll actually have space to use my welding station because at the moment, I mean, it's covered in parts and stuff but I don't want to weld right next to all this uh, because this is all flammable <laughs> and as you can see there isn't really much space even without the door there. So yeah for the go-kart build I have some uh, angle iron there which I was intending to use as frame rails. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that anymore because this stuff is extremely heavy and that engine over there is only like five horsepower it's not particularly quick and it is governed so uh, yeah <laughs> it's not going to be fast. And then I also have this cart here which I've modified with some foam to move things but uh, yeah this is could be useful for something. Okay, back to the car itself. So here is the trunk lid. Uh, basically to take it off, I have two potential options. Either uh, I need to take off these bolts. You can see that one of them at the top is rounded there. That is my own doing. Or I can take off these ones on the side, which is most likely what's gonna happen. And then I'll have to drill those out. <laughs> Um, these are actually extremely difficult to take off as I have discovered. I tried to do it by hand even with just a screwdriver and it was rounding. It is the proper size but uh, they are really quite stuck in there so it's gonna be interesting. So I went inside and got lunch and came back outside an hour later hoping that uh, they would be done cutting their grass over there but apparently not. Um, but I did actually manage to get one of those bolts out using this setup here. Um, basically Torx end, I think it's a T30, and yeah, it's uh, not actually that tricky. I feel like a bit of an idiot for rounding those. Um, I tried to do it with a screwdriver and then it kind of slipped the threads and then that was dumb. I'm not really strong enough to push it in enough to get a good like hold on it, so yeah. I'm gonna be taking this bottom one off the same method as I did here, and then hopefully I can get those other ones out relatively painlessly. I might have to I don't know, hopefully I don't have to drill them. I don't want to make this thing useless, I want to be able to sell it. But interestingly, in the vein of things being weird, I took this cover off and there is a lot of stuff going on here that I don't believe happened in the factory. Um, like, cl like cr crimping things and 
yeah, just general weirdness going on, which I'm not particularly enthused about. Um, it seems like somebody may have had trouble in the past trying to get this thing to go. And then as you go down into here, there is also no break in the wiring. Uh, so I've been following it down and trying to get behind it um, by removing this stuff and you can see it's there. So I'm not really sure what to do about that. However, I have uncovered the speaker, which is cool. I'm planning on using that for a bit of a project, uh, mainly that stuff over there. Okay, a bit more digging and I've pulled off this entire panel, which is now sitting over there. Uh, that was interesting, <laughs> but basically uh, there's a bunch of rust in here, which is great This wire here goes down and then kind of disappears into down there um, I'm not sure where that goes yet. We'll have to follow it <laughs> Although I don't really want to give all this wiring with the harness. So somewhere in here uh, is where that connects pops out here and then up into here and interestingly as well all this wiring connects down to this which goes seemingly into the uh, fuel like fuel door popper um, which is this <laughs> right here so I don't know I found that kind of cool taking a bit of a break from the trunk I've decided to jack the car up onto a uh, ramp it's one of these rhino ramp things <laughs> a little bit more weight than what this car has on it currently as you can see it's undergone a, a little bit of weight reduction just a small amount however the hood is still riding on top um, but I was thinking about taking off the exhaust uh, because I want to sell that it is worth quite a bit of money especially the catalytic converters on these cars are worth quite a lot um, they are tricky though <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to show you this but Basically, to get the catalytic converters off, um, they are like deep, deep in there. Uh, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be able to see it. But the best way to do it is from underneath. Except going underneath at the moment is tricky. I don't have a lift. The best thing I can do is um, put it up on blocks and also jack stands. But I don't feel super comfortable with that. Um, so I want to try and take the exhaust off, I guess starting from the easy parts. Easy is a relative term because nothing is truly easy on a car that's this rusty. Like my goodness, I don't know how I'm going to take off that W member. That thing is just like really not in the best of shape. <laughs> and that's the whole reason why I'm doing all this, just because this car is... Um, toast underneath but you can see the exhaust pipe there and the fact that it routes to the muffler it's got some bad welds on it indicating that it's likely been taken off before and then there's also a new piece of metal there so it's probably been patched very poorly in the past before as well so I think what I might end up doing is because all this stuff is like I don't know it's pretty crap it's not gonna be worth it in a full set to somebody so I think I might just cut it um, but there is a flange there, and that's the only one before the Y-pipe, which I'd like to take off in its entirety. So, uh, and then after that, you can kind of see the flanges for the bottom of the cats. And then after those, it's connected to the headers, and that's pretty challenging. So, where I'm at, basically, is I'd like to take off the muffler, and then, out of curiosity, I want to start the car to hear what it sounds like without the muffler, just for fun. Um, but I think I'm gonna have to get my saws all out and cut this. And then <laughs> we'll see about all these exhaust hangers and stuff. I'll probably cut it just uh, just after that exhaust hanger, or just before the exhaust hanger, where it's still kind of good metal, because that that piece there looks pretty crap. But anyway, let's uh, let's see about that. So that was a bit of a failure. <laughs> Basically, my, the blade on my saw is too short to cut through um, the pipe in its at its current length, <laughs> and it's also bending. Uh, I've already broken one blade, and I did a bit of damage to this one, but I mean, not much else I can do. They're they're disposable for a reason, but um, yeah, the exhaust is still not cut off yet. <laughs> I apologize, but I have minorly failed for now. What I really need to do is figure out a way to get this car up a lot higher to be able to get that stuff underneath it. I am having trouble kind of worming my way under there and feeling safe doing it, uh, so that's sort of the problem. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm going to set the car back down, try to move it over a little bit, because I kind of moved it on an angle here unintentionally with the jack. And then, uh, yeah, kind of as I've been procrastinating a little bit, I also took the pump off of here, and it's a nice straight shaft and a little bit rusty, but that'll be perfect for a clutch. And my goodness, <laughs> we have an engine. It's going to be good. This is going to be a lot of fun. So I know that eventually I'm going to have to take on these things that I'm finding difficult. I've got stuff from way back when I was pulling out these interior pieces like this still being stuck there that I haven't fixed yet because I just haven't really wanted to. Uh, and it's kind of the same way now with the exhaust and uh, yeah, that's just kind of how I'm feeling. So I've been procrastinating a little bit more, just taking off some of the pieces in the door. Like the latch is gone, the button that uh, senses if the door's closed or not is gone, which means this car will eternally beep, which is going to be annoying when we do eventually attempt to drive it a little bit. <laughs> I'm hoping that that can actually happen, by the way. Um, it would be awesome to try and drive this in an autocross, although I don't think that they're going to let me without doors. Um, <laughs> But anyway, I'm thinking, I'm just looking at over here and I'm like, what do we not need? And this entire wiper assembly seems kind of interesting. So I figure I'm going to take that off just for fun. And then, uh, yeah, I'll post the two pieces of it up and see if anybody needs it. Okay, I can at least call that a success. That was really easy to take off uh, and it all came out in one piece. So the whole kind of front end here is looking pretty empty which is good. We basically are stripping it back to the absolute basics. Eventually, I was thinking about potentially taking out the windscreen, although um, we'll see if I even have time to do that. I have no idea what I'm going to do yet. Um, I think I'm just going to start taking off some MISC stuff, like this little piece right there is the uh, hood sensor to tell if it's closed or not. Um, one thing I'm unsure is if the car will drive without that down we'll see. Um, it's definitely going to be angry, which is kind of fine. I expect it to be mad at me for a whole bunch of other reasons. Not exactly sure why. <laughs> oh yeah, the headlights are on the car at the moment just because I've been doing some rearranging. I've got all this stuff lined up here and uh, I'm just trying to clear off my workbench so I can actually work there instead of having to work over there, which is currently just kind of outlaid with my tools. But man, <laughs> Sometimes there just isn't quite the progress that I want, but I think that's just how it goes working on these cars. Like, I'm pulling this car apart. My timeline is really quite extended. I really, um, I just want to get rid of the shell before the end of the summer. That's kind of my idea. So if we can have everything out, then we can get rid of the shell. Not everything has to be sold in that time, but I ideally like this big thing out of my garage so I can put the Tiburon in here for the winter. And, um... Yeah, we'll see. Before the snow flies, this gotta go. That being said, the Tiburon is a lot smaller than this car, so if we need to, we could still store the engine and the, some of the drivetrain. I, again, I'd like to get rid of some of the big stuff, like these doors would be great. This bumper, <laughs> I need to get rid of the hood still. I haven't even posted that. Um, most of the interior pieces, uh, <laughs> the shell itself, I don't know, a lot of stuff. Anything that's kind of big needs to go, and uh, that's... Uh, yeah, well the small stuff is kind of adding up too. Alright, I have uh, undone some of my previous errors. That whole piece that was there is now gone and I managed to take out the entire uh, hood release which used to run along these little clips here, down into here, and then boom, <laughs> it's not there anymore. So I'm thinking I'll probably end up using that for my go-kart build as kind of a throttle. Um, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> if anybody wants it though, it's uh, as with everything. <laughs> for sale.